Kaiskamahuk is situated 40 kilometers to the west of King Williamstown. The village rests in the foothills of the Amatola Mountains. My research explores Ukutwasa initiation process following Lindawa Gubu Nzimela in St. Matthew's village, Kaiskamahuk. My focus is on the five stages of Ukutwasa, looking at how Gubu trains as Ikliha. Through Ukutwasa initiation, women are able to understand their self better. Ukutwasa also instills maturity and opens up insights into their other talents, such as leadership skills. In this way, Ukutwasa enhances their identities. I received the calling at a very young age, but I ignored it. This stage is hidden and only initiative actions and behaviours foretell what a person will become. As life went on, I consulted a Sangoma about a car accident and the Sangoma told me I have to answer my calling or I will fall ill and die. After I was contacted by my ancestors in a dream, I informed my parents about this encounter and told them that I need to go to Ungonde and start my training to become Ikecha, traditional healer. When we got to Ungonde, I informed him about this problem that I have and that I was instructed to come and see him. He said that he was already foretold about my coming. My ancestors had made contact with him. I started to cry because I was not ready to become Ikecha at that time. I had dreams of going to study at the University of Fort Hare, but I had to put it all aside to become Ikecha, a traditional healer. The third stage is often an alarming experience for both the person and their family. Participants often start reflecting during this stage since the intensity of the calling increases only at this stage. The fourth stage is the stage of accepting the truth and so the preparation for the initiation begins. Gubu started her training on the 12th October 2016. When the drum starts playing, it's an automatic response to start dancing. As you can see, I am fat, but when I start dancing, I feel weightless and do not feel that I'm fat. All of this is just an automatic response to the music. I do sing a lot, church and ritual songs, but there is a difference between the two, because when we sing and dance with the drums, that effect lifts my spirit up and sends my soul away. This stage marks an intense transition from being a trainee to the stage of a fully-fledged diviner. Hey, hey, 
then in the morning, I forget about this name. I say, hey, Tata, they say, they say, something, but I don't know what's Kubu food. I don't know what's Kubu food. I don't know what's Kubu food. The initiate loses her identity and takes a new identity. She is given a new name from her Iqlikha's ancestors. a name coming from an elder's voice at a ritual when I was down on my knees and I got a fright. I was given the name Gubezilo. I then received my beads in honor of my mother and father where they slaughtered a goat and pinned their tails on my headband. I am now a fully fledged diviner in St. Matthew's village. <laughs> Uku Twasa has nothing to do with a person's belief or aspirations to Twasa. Results show that it is a calling bestowed upon a person, irrespective of her wishes or will. As revealed in Gubu's story, Uku Twasa is not a sin, but a gift of healing from God, and its presence is channeled through the ancestors who are believed to be mediums between God and the people.